Today we will examine the history of Arab bows, specifically focusing on before the Muslim conquest of the 7th century. Much of what is online today focuses on the later Arab bows after these conquests, and such archery content deserve their own videos. However, this video will go back to the ancient roots of the Arabian bow. I want to thank Rashid from the channel Al Mubarizan Archery for helping with the research of this video. Let's go back to the beginning. There is evidence that human habitation in the Arabian Peninsula dates back to around 125,000 years ago. A 2011 study found that the first modern humans to spread across uh, east to Asia left Africa about 75,000 years ago across the strait between Yemen on the Arabian Peninsula, connecting the Horn of Africa and Arabia. In the Neolithic period, there were cultures in the Arabian Peninsula such as Al Magar in modern-day southwestern Najad. This culture is characterized as being one of the first uh, to involve the widespread domestication of animals. This is where we encounter the rock engravings dating back uh, to about 8,000 years ago, making them one of the earliest depictions of bows in the Arabian Peninsula. These rock carvings seem to depict reflex handle with deflex tip bows, although these artwork are quite abstract and you can't take it literally. What we can see, however, is that bows did exist back then for hunting. Also, there is an interesting depiction of a chariot with perhaps an archer on the right. It's too abstract to tell. Now let's get into some physical bulls actually excavated. First, we look at the excavation in Oman of miniature copper bows around 900 to 600 BC. It shows bows with recurved tips, um, but it's uncertain whether these bows were uh, long bows or composites. Uh, were self bows. Uh, these are miniature bows that are non-functional. Now let's look at the Syrian reliefs dated around 645 to 635 BCE. It's a scene showing Assyrian forces pursuing Arab raiders during the reign of Ashurbanipal, king of Assyria. It shows bows with deflexed tips without the reflex at the handle. Now let's look at the sources from the Greek and Roman world. If you recall, I made a video about the Syrian composite Yurtsi bow. In a related article, bone sia reinforcements similar to the Yurtsi bow was dug up in the UAE. While we don't know for certain what the bow looked like for those bone reinforcements, the only example we have so far is the Yurtsi Roman slash Syrian bow. So perhaps the Arab composite bow was similar to the Yurtsi bow as hypothesized in the article. During this time period, mentions of Arab archers were scarce. However, the Syrian archers during this time period of the Roman Empire was much more documented. In 70 AD, the town of Emissa, 160 kilometers north of Damascus, sent archers to aid the Roman siege of Jerusalem with possibly composite bows. There was even a headstone of a Syrian archer found along Hadrian's Wall in the British Isles. Syrian units uh, were also used to conquer parts of Arabia. There is a 1,000 strong camel unit called the Dromadari and it was established by Trajan in Syria. A small number of these camel units is recorded in Dora Europos. Perhaps these camel units fought similar to their ancient ancestors with a mix of bow and melee weapons. When it comes to northern Arabians, we have sources showing some Nabataean exilia used by the Roman army. Remember, the Romans had conquests in parts of northwestern Arabia along with areas in the Levant. There is evidence that the Romans occupied as far as Hegra of northwestern Arabia. And earlier, uh, there are Greek sources mentioning Arab archers, such as Eronimos of Cardia. 
But when it comes to Southern Arabia, there are very few sources left for us, especially when it comes to their archery equipment and techniques. Um, what we can find, however, are some arrowheads that survive through time, and they resemble similar designs to Western arrowheads. A trade was common in this area, so this is no surprise. In fact, the volume of commerce between Rome and India via the Arabian Sea was huge since the, since the conquest of Egypt by the Romans in the 30 BC. Now let's look at the artwork of 6th century AD from the mosaic in Kiano's church in Mount Nebo in Jordan. It depicts a nomad leading a camel with a bow with deflex tips and likely reflex handle slung across his back. Similar design to the Neolithic Arab bows depicted in artwork. Now let's look at the bows from some written sources. This one specifically the bows of the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad had six bows. The crooked one, the sweet smelling one, the yellow one, and they were all made of naba, which is probably species of yew. And there was also the white one and another bow called the quiet one because of its quietness when an arrow is shot from it. But it was broken during the Battle of Ahud, so it was given to one of his companions. Another bow of the Prophet Muhammad was the straight one, or the settler of issues. Now we look at the sources from Hadith uh, during the 8th and the 9th centuries. When the Messenger of Allah delivered a speech on the battlefield, he would do so leaning on a bow when he delivered a sermon on Friday. He would do so leaning on his staff, so the bow seemed to be long enough for it to be acting as a staff. The source also possibly describes a Mediterranean draw. Then he motioned with his hands, clenching his fingers, then opening them like an archer does with his hands. Now let's look at some sources from Saracen archery, um, specifically pre-Islamic um, archery. You have the ancient Arab lock of pre-Islamic times. With this, you draw with the four fingers minus the thumb. If we go back to the Arab archery book, it mentions bows made of single staves, two staves split lengthwise. It also mentions the reinforced bows um, that have the horn of the goats placed in the belly and sinew on the back. Um, but the, the author mentions that they were only used by experts or those who live near water, which shows the scarcity of horn bows in ancient times for the Arabs. The non-composite bows are those of the people of the Hejaz, which is western central Arabia. Uh, the, the author also confirms that they were made out of nab or shawat wood. He mentions that so much they have long and thick arrows quite as much as the bows of the Arabs for the Arabs have their bows big because it is necessary for them to use large arrows. In summary, prior to the Arab conquest, the main bow of the Arabs of the Arabian Peninsula would have been the self long bow of which the most common type is the reflex handle with deflex tips uh, during the ancient time period. Simple deflex bows were also depicted, such as from the Assyrian artwork, and we also have reflex and straight bows. Uh, likely all variation of these bows existed. Horn sinew composite bows, on the other hand, existed in Arabia during the time, but it would have been rare due to its complex design and the construction and lack of reliability in, in the harsh, dry weather. So their use would have been mostly limited to noblemen. Later bows after the Muslim conquest were influenced by other cultures such as the Sasanians and the Turkic tribes, and composite corn bows became more popular as the Muslim empires became larger. This will be another video if people are interested. I want to thank Rashid from the channel Al Mubarizan uh, Archery for helping with research for this video. Check out his channel for amazing content of Arab archery. Thank you very much.